What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? How can I best support you? Um, so I think really what it comes down to is being able to like effectively approach the question in like a rational way. I know that's sort of like a, a really broad generalization, but sometimes I'll overcompensate with like technical or fundamental analysis and I'll sort of overlook the simplicity of the question when I could have just, you know, intuitively looked at it and said, oh yeah, of course, X is the correct answer, but um, sort of being bogged down by uh, the fundamental analysis of, of logical reasoning. Gotcha. Okay. Are there certain questions where you notice this happening more than others? Um, I would say sometimes sufficient and mostly sufficient questions. Um, I find myself sort of lost in connecting the abstract elements. Um, like for example, like C, like uh, one of the, um, well, I won't give, I won't give a specific example because I don't know if I can come up with one of them, right? but um, essentially just um, sufficient assumption questions will confuse me. Gotcha. Okay. So we're talking in the logical reasoning context here, overthinking easy questions, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So a couple of things are noting that there's a certain order of difficulty in the logical reasoning section. So the first 10 or so questions, you don't have a lot of difficult ones there. There's very few level four, level five questions, if any, in the first 10. So those are questions I would take them at their face value. And just note that going off the bat. Like there's, those are not meant to separate people at the 160s from those in the 170s. They're meant primarily to separate those in the 120s and 130s okay. from, every, from everybody else. That's overall. But then for sufficient assumption questions specifically, it can be useful to notice and to be aware of the different major formats these questions follow. There are certain underlying formulas to sufficient assumption questions in particular. And I lay these out in my sufficient assumption workshop, by the way. Have you watched that one? I actually have. I've, I've really done a deep dive into awesome. all your categories already. Great, great. So you know then that that's great. So notice then that there's, there's one major category of sufficient assumptions that's simply a restatement or broadening mm -hmm. of the argument itself. Yeah, yeah, those those I'm typically fine with, but it's it's the one where you know you have to guarantee the conclusion by showing that like C requires or A requires C requires A, mm -hmm. um, and then A requires B. Um, I sort of get lost in just the vocabulary and the way that the stimulus is typically laid out that. I, I, I almost panic. And then I see a choice that looks attractive and I'm like, wait a second. No, that shouldn't be right. And then I'm like, wait, are they trying to trick me with this answer? And then it sort of just snowballs and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to go with this one when I'll be between two. And that's when I'll really fall. So. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that, that could be tough then because if you, if you panic and then just pick something that looks good, oftentimes what looks good is the reversal of the answer. Yeah or a slight tweak on what could be correct, but that tweak makes it wrong. And LSAC is very good at making wrong answer choices that are tempting. So mm -hmm. when, what, have you ever tried working through sufficient assumption questions by what type of sufficient assumption question they are? I have never done that. It could be um, useful for you. I, I have a categorization like that I can send you after this call. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.